Good morning, YouTube. Uh, this morning, just finished watching a video uh, with JW Solo USA. I'm um, subscribed with him and his channel, and I get to watch a lot of his uh, his content. And you know, it gives me some ideas for some of my videos, and we can share back and forth every now and again, and and kind of make uh, the the channel channels grow, and uh, obviously give YouTube some insight into living off grid a little bit. So. Um, Let's take you to in, on a, a quick morning trip for me um, after I've dropped the kids off or after I've gotten up and let you guys see how a, a typical morning is off grid. Because a lot of people have a misconception that it, you got candle light inside of the house, you're um, making your own cereal, um, you're, you're picking feathers off of chickens in the morning. And, and it, none of that sounds bad at all, but um, it's, it's actually more uh, modern than you think it would be. And I'm glad that uh, JW shows that everything can run off grid. And I've been doing it for some time. But let me show you guys how my typical morning goes. First off, uh, my son's always watching some weird show. He's here watching TV. Um, you're going to see some things unfinished. You're going to see some things still being painted. Um, and just ignore it. Right now, we're uh, about to set up our breakfast for today. We're out of waffles unfortunately so we have our tombstone original pizza it's uh 8 41 i don't know if that's bad but uh, i have eggs and bacon i just don't feel like making it plus i want to show you guys uh how i can actually use electricity to cook everything so we do have a uh lp uh gas uh range we bought this brand new over at home depot it's an adore series it's a pretty expensive model but i love it because of the fact that it has stainless steel knobs where if uh, if we were using the oven, the plastic knobs would have melted um, over time. So we don't actually even use the oven, unfortunately. We use it as storage because I didn't like how to use how I use the uh, gas uh, for the oven. I do have my own converted system here. Um, liquid propane, 15 gallon tank lasts about two months in between cooking, and we cook every single day. So um, that basically keeps the stove off of grid but it doesn't mean that we don't cook with electricity we we have our crock pot we use it for stews and things like that and that uses about 900 watts to 600 watts just depending on the setting it has a high and a low setting and a keep warm setting i think runs about 500 um we usually run it whenever we want to do um like a stew or chili or we're just um wanting to free up some pot space and, and heat up something like uh macaroni and cheese even that so uh we have our microwave next to it um it's a 900 watt magic chef i bought it on, on sale um it was uh, it's a smaller size microwave but for popcorn and other things that we heat up it's, it's no big deal i'd like to get a bigger one um but for 900 watts um i was thinking about the battery bank when i purchased it 900 watts is actually pretty good it comes out at about 1100 on the inverter uh, here we have a Living Solutions um, mini bake oven. We use it for cooking or baking biscuits, uh, garlic bread when we make spaghetti, uh, a lot of small things, just um, simple things. And this runs about 13 to 1500 watts, just depending on the heat setting. You have a timer on there, which I recommend for all of, uh, all your electrical devices. And then right here, it goes up to 450 degrees. It has a broil and it has a toaster uh, um, feature on there. And that brings me up to our toaster. Uh, used every day. It uses about 1,100 watts whenever it's used for about 30 seconds. So it's not really a big deal. Um, and all this is just basically stacked until we finish up our cabinets and, and get everything neatened up like we want. We, we're still building this out to be a bar. And uh, eventually, these will all have their own uh, separate unit to sit on and that brings us over to our pizza i put in here and uh this is our newest addition um it has a convection um mode on there we use it to cook food and it cooks it super super fast and that uses about 1800 watts on the on the grid and then we have our keurig coffee um and then we got a water purifier right there i'm sorry about that it's in the frame but um you got our keurig um coffee maker we use how, we use house blend in this house um, at Starbucks, so it, it keeps it cheap by just making it over at home, and that uses about 1,300 watts for a brief moment, and then maybe a minute, 
and then um, every cup's another uh, what 100 watts coming out of the battery bank not a lot of power um, you do have our a little kitchen maid I think uh, blender wife uses it whenever she's mixing to make up fresh uh, home batches of biscuits and then let me bring you over to our refrigerator and that's all off grid we have a lot of garlic bread a lot of meatballs I like my spaghetti and some veggies uh, some cookies that we bake those inside of the little mini living solutions every now and again and I had a timer here not a timer but a temperature thing here when we were running a timer um, we don't use it anymore and we didn't replace those batteries and then in the refrigerator typical refrigerator leftovers from last night with uh, spaghetti macaroni so taking you over to here again everything's not finished so ignore the things that you don't want to see all right bringing you over here we have a full-sized uh freezer um that we have i know it's a very efficient one i think this one uses about a kilowatt a day um it's made by fr frigidaire so frigidaire however you pronounce that you guys know we have uh we actually have clothes in the washer. I don't want to show too much. We got a Cabrio washer, the Platinum Series. We got a Cabrio dryer in the shed. We use it um, with the Generac um, 7000 generator. But um, haven't used it recently because I hang a lot of my clothes up. Um, we have an iron that runs off of our solar power here at the home. And I'm going to take it into the bedroom, but I'm going to put my finger over the camera for a second. <laughs> Let me find it. Not to show too much in here, we're folding laundry, but we, we use a fan at night. We have the uh, iDevices um, switches in here so we control everything on timers. And the air conditioner inside of the window. And then we have a plug-in uh, oil heater with a thermostat built in. Um, you guys know about my TV in my room. We have Apple TV here, PlayStation 3 in here, Xbox One in the living room. And in the kids' room, they have an Xbox 360. So... It's off currently because my system is configured to turn off um, at certain times of the day, usually when we're taking naps or going to sleep, but, and then it turns back on during other parts. If I wasn't on my phone, I could actually talk to Siri and it'll turn everything on by just telling it to power on everything. But anyway, let me take you to the next part. We're in my closet, my suit's there. Um, have another refrigerator in here. We keep all of our uh, adult beverages in here um, and snacks and stuff like that inside of my closet. I know it's creepy, but keeps it away from the kids. Um, this right here is a very high efficiency a, uh, Magic Chef mini fridge. You can use this to store food. When we first moved here, we did. And then we bought the, uh, the, mini, the bigger refrigerator and then we bought the bigger freezer. Um, and we slowly took the food out of here and just put it in here for the beverages. So I don't think I just bought this to be an alcoholic. I do have a broken iPad in there. One of my kids broke and I'm hiding it from him. Uh, so let's go back out. And now we're on to the crown jewel, the battery bank here. I did some rewiring the other day um, in one of my videos when I did my last battery maintenance. And uh, I ended up replacing some wires um, that were actually getting hot. I have them, I think, still here on my thermal camera. Basically, what I ended up doing was going through and looking at the temperatures of the wires. Um, it's typical that they, these are going to be as hot as your inverter. Not really a big deal. Um, you're seeing here the after effects after changing out the wires of what the temperature was on, on the uh, system. Um, and then if you go back far enough, you'll see like what before loads and after loads. And these are the 70s are before loads or before like my big things in the kitchen. And then the uh, 90s are after I changed out the cable. Okay, you'll see in a minute we go, there's a 162, that was a um, bus bar fuse, um, it had a bad wire on there, it was a, it was a kink in, it was basically a kink inside of the, um, of the wire that was restricting that, but that got up to 162, um, and then the wire itself was 151, 
I replaced that with a new shunt bar. I'll show you that in just a second, but those temperatures are unacceptable for holding wire. Now, the, the actual plastic doesn't melt into like 300 degrees, but at the same time, I, I know that um, metal getting that warm um, could be a, a issue. It's free heat during the winter though, right? <laughs> So, right here, you got my outback and my little electrical hazard sticker to warn people. Now, I did have an idea to put a light in here. I can see it much better than the camera can, but uh, basically, I have all my networking gear in here. I have my uh, um, Wink hub so I can control all of my smart devices. I have my server back there. Um, and then I have a backup hard drive running backup on all of my computers in the house. It's, it's basically hardwired, and that's where you're going to see some network cables in here. I have a vent that I knocked out and then cut out. I'd actually punched a hole through that just to get that to where it could ventilate some of the uh, the hot air over towards the battery bank. And then back here, geez, I wish I had a, a light. That's why I don't actually show too many videos here. But I have my bus bar here, if you guys can see it. Um, that's my red and then I got my black in here and then as you go along you can see more and more wiring and the reason why I do not uh, a lot of times go in here and show video because you can't tell which wires are power from camera and which ones are network but the yellow wires are network the red wires are power the black wires are power and then the green um, is Outback's um, cable now I have uh, my flex max 80 disconnected currently uh, or un unmounted from the wall currently because I want to get around uh, wiring up the wind turbine generator that I'm, I'm hooking up and I'm making room for my classic when it gets here I have a box that I've basically made specifically for my flex neck DC everything negative goes into this box and then it has two cables that pop in for red um, for all of my positive feeds going to the <laughs> Uh, inverter which is at the top um, I do have another box here that controls uh, basically all of my AC side loads and then I have a little voltmeter that I just put in hold on hold on one second buddy all right so right here you can see currently the house draw um, I just put this meter in and I don't have a box made for it yet but anyway it's a current draw is about 512 um, since I've put this meter in which is a couple days maybe a week ago uh, we've used 94 kilowatt hours. I think that's pretty neat. If I was keeping a chart of this, I'd basically be able to tell you how much power I'm using each day. Uh, Outback does a real good job with the FlexNet DC and monitoring that for me, but it's also nice to be able to compare that and um, align that with what I've used. Um, KVUSMC recommends you use like a uh, digital rotary meter, and I like that as well. But uh, for my budget, that worked out. I think it's like 20 times more just to get the other one. Not saying it's, you know, not needed, but I like this one a little bit better. And then that brings you over to our Outback mate. Um, I usually check over here, or my kids usually check over here as they get up and get going through their day. Uh, you can see we don't have any power coming in from the line. I actually have that hooked up to a generator in the shed, and it never turns on. And except for when I'm doing equalizing once a month, or if I have a week of bad, bad power um generation so we got 82 percent currently um and this is overnight of course uh we're drawing three amps and we charge at 59.2 based off of the 